holy and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> One of the most profound experiences I have ever had with the presence of God occurred to me when I least expected it. I was laying on a table in a doctor's office with gel all over my very large exposed stomach. At about 20 weeks of pregnancy, they do this sonogram called the anatomy scan. So I remember I was pregnant with my son, Will, and they were doing this scan, and they could see everything. At one point, the sonogram technician said, oh, there's a kidney, and there's a cross-section of the kidney, and there's the other kidney. And I had this thought clear as day, thank God, God is forming this child in my womb, because clearly I would have forgotten a kidney. You could see the chambers of the heart. And I thought again, thank God, God is forming this child in my womb. Because I don't even know which direction the flaps are supposed to go in the heart. I'm pretty sure if it was up to me to put the vertebrae in, I would get them all mixed up, maybe backward, and probably forget a few. Thank goodness I'm not in charge of this. And the words from the psalm echoed in my head. For you have created my inmost parts. You have knit me together in my mother's womb. And even though biologically, I knew that genetics and my body, all the reasons that I needed naps all the time were actually creating um, parts of this child. So much of it was God. And I also had this really clear sense that this child was not mine, but rather God's, that I was given custody of for a time. And there was something really beautiful in thinking about how intimately God knows our inmost parts. How deeply God sees us and knows us and loves us. So the psalm we have appointed for today, Psalm 139, is one of the most beautiful psalms I think there is. And I would encourage every single one of us to memorize it. To have these words grafted so far deep into our souls that it would be impossible for us to forget them. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press on me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot obtain it. For you created me out of, you created my inmost parts and knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. This psalm is beautiful. In fact, um, I know a little kid who uh, doesn't really like to talk. And whenever this kid wants to say something to his mom, he goes like this. Like, I just wish you could take all these thoughts and put them right in your head. I picture um, someone plugging in one of those USB drives and having an automatic download. And if I could take this psalm and plug it into each one of us, if I could take this psalm and plug it into me, and permanently download it, I know that it would be a very good thing. In fact, at one point this week when I was thinking about preparing for my sermon, it, became, it suddenly became a really good idea for a little while, but all I should do is just read the psalm over and over again. There's really nothing better I can add to it. But I'll press on. <laughs> so there's this knowledge that God knows us so intimately that even the hairs on our head are numbered. That's incredible. Sometimes I don't even know what color the hairs on my head are. The fact that God can number them is incredible. But then there's the flip side of this. Uh, there's, I think for many of us, the part of us that doesn't really want to be that well known. 
the part of us that would like to stay hidden, the part of us that doesn't want anyone, even God, to intrude in our most inner lives. And I wonder what that's about. Can we let God be so intimate and close to us? Because just as though I had, just like I had this experience of the sonogram of, of being open and, and exposed to God and being um, so much a part of God's creation, I also remember having this experience of being searched out and known. And I was traveling um, to Las Vegas for um, my husband's cousin's wedding. It happened to be the day after my mother's ordination, so it was really kind of a whirlwind time. I had stayed up really late and hadn't gotten much sleep and woken up really early to get to the airport, packed everything in a suitcase. And I was traveling alone, and I, I got there, I was going to meet Keith in Las Vegas, and the guy, it must have been 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, opens up my suitcase and looks all through it. And I didn't have anything really secret or private in there, just regular travel stuff. But it suddenly struck me, maybe because I was overtired, maybe because it seemed like the middle of the night, that this guy was searching through my stuff. I hated that feeling. And it made me cry. <laughs> I didn't want him to search me out and know me. I didn't want him to know what I packed for that trip. And he took some of my hair products. <laughs> there was this, this sense that I didn't want to be searched out and know. The sense that that was up too much for me. But when we look at this psalm, we know that God has no choice but to know us so intimately and desires us so much. In fact, this word, Lord, you have searched me out and known me. That word, searched me out, um, also has connotations of excavating. You know, like the, the um, archaeologists sweeping, gently sweeping off dirt. Gently, gently uncovering layer by layer so it's not to damage the preciousness that lies underneath the surface. There's this sense that God digs us in a way. Can I get away with that one? <laughs> and this story, set in the lectionary where it is, it echoes the call of Samuel. We heard God calling, Samuel, Samuel. Yes, Eli, you called me. It's kind of a funny part in the Bible. I think if it wasn't 8 o'clock in the morning, we would have really laughed. Um, my heard it really well. And then, you know, finally Samuel realizes it's God calling him. And then we hear at the, at the end, the gospel, the calling of Nathaniel, how God knows us and calls us. And it continues this epiphany theme of manifestation of all the ways that Christ is shown for and manifested in this world. And we come to the knowledge that we've been kind of hearing echoes of throughout these last couple weeks, that if God knows us so well and is manifesting himself in us, then God also knows the people around us that well and is manifesting himself in them. And if God knows that and manifests himself in them so well, then God also manifests himself in strangers. I remember going through the ordination process, and there was a woman who went to seminary in, in New York City, a general seminary, and she said to me, gosh, it's such a wonderful spiritual place to be in New York City. And I had never heard that from anyone being from upstate New York. <laughs> Such a wonderful spiritual place to be, she said, because I walk down the street and it's teeming with people, and I think, oh my gosh, God created each one of you, and God loves every single one of you with such a full heart. And I hope I have the grace to be able to say that and know that in crowds. Sometimes in crowds, all I think is get me out of here. <laughs> Can I have the grace to see what God sees, even in such a little bit, the belovedness and preciousness of each one of his creations? That's why sometimes we say at the end of the service, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. And I wanted to close with a little poem. I, I don't even know if it was a poem. It was one of those silly Facebook things. But I typed it up because it moved my heart right there on Facebook. And it's just this little bit. I made copies of this for everyone. So you can pick this up after the service if this is something that you 
life he touches you. It simply says this. While I was praying one day, a woman asked, Who are you, God? And he answered, I am. But who is I am? She asked. And he replied, I am love, I am peace, I am grace, I am joy, I am strength, I am safety, I am shelter, I am power, I am the creator, I am the comforter, I am the beginning and the end, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And with tears in her eyes, she looked toward heaven and said, now I understand. But who am I? And God tenderly wiped the tears from her eyes and whispered, You are mine. May we have the grace to let into our hearts, even when they feel cold and hard, the knowledge that God searches us out and knows us and loves us more deeply and intimately than anyone else can. And may we have the grace to try our best to see that we love us and all of God's people.